Here we are, we're back on the road again. Due to COVID restrictions, I'm doing a tour of the Eyre Peninsula. And the first stop is Point Lowly, which is one of the most epic locations to catch squid. I absolutely love coming here. I need some for a feed. I need some for bait for the whiting we're gonna try and catch. Let's hit the water. Beautiful day. Amazing. So what's really cool about being back on the home turf is you know all the little spots. So I've got this little honey hole for squid, which is usually really good. So that's the most obvious place to start. So that's where I'm going to start. Early in the morning, gone with two bright eggalicious jigs. Always fine, particularly in the Spencer Gulf, they, they do like bright colors. So incoming tide, Point Lolly is really, really weird. So an incoming tide is actually running out the coast because of the small islands and the changes in depth. It actually makes this a bit of a back eddy. So it's kind of strange. You'd think with an incoming tide, you'd be coming down the coast, but we're actually gonna drift along out towards the point. I'm gonna stick that one out the back. I'm gonna do some casts with the other one. All right. I've had some incredible squidding sessions here, so I'll be keen to see what it's like. There's a very, very good possibility of me getting totally covered in ink. So stay tuned. Got one. It's gonna happen eventually. <laughs> That's a really big squid. <laughs> it feels like a big squid, unless it's a cuttlefish. Oh, I think it's a squid. It's a squid. First one for the morning. Good size. Grab him. There we go. Beautiful Spencer Gulf squid. He is a very nice eating size on the bright coloured jig. First thing in the morning, I was a little bit worried because I've had about 10 casts and I haven't caught one, which is a little bit unusual for here, but things are looking up. <laughs> I told you, I told you it was going to be ink. All right. Chop. Into the tub you go, buddy. Now, where's your mate? There's another one on that jig. Oh no, that's a cutley. So, this time of year at Point Lowly, you get hordes and hordes of these giant cuttlefish. And this is a tiny one, um, but people come from all over the world to dive for these, um, to watch them spawn because they're, they come in in mass, um, and they're all changing colours and mating with each other. This one's gone all brown, but they're an amazing creature. Look at him change colours. There he goes again, he's gonna turn white. We'll get him back in. These are actually totally protected. 
at Point Lowley. So all of them are going to go back in. That's cool. Don't come and eat the jig again. It's against the rules. So all those giant cuttlefish, when they come into the coast, all the big snapper follow in. And not that we're allowed to fish for snapper anymore, but Point Lowley was one of the most famous, famous places to come and catch big snapper. And I can remember coming out in this boat, going a few hundred metres offshore and catching fish to over a metre, which is just astounding when you think about it. But not anymore. We're banned for three years from snapper fishing over here. There's one. Let's say that's a squid. That is a squid. There's only a little one. But what I'm going to do, there's no actual size limit on squid, so I wanted some for whiting bait. So I'm going to take some of these sort of mid, mid sized smaller ones for bait and keep a few bigger ones to eat. All right, let's get a few more. Bit of a northerly breeze. That was a nice bite. It's either a very big squid or a cutley. That is a nice squid and there's a heap of them coming in behind him. <laughs> That's awesome, job's on now. Here comes another one. Check out this one. Oh, a bit of ink going everywhere. And there's another one there. Hang on, get that out. He can go in there. You watch, there'll be another one right here. Here he comes. It's right there. Good size squid too, eh? Here he comes. He's got it. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, that's a big one too. <laughs> oh, check out that one. Oh, monster squid. While they don't get quite as big as the ones in Tassie, they're still pretty damn good. Oh, that is such a dangerous spot to have that squid. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. Oh, there's another one on that jig. There he goes. We've got three on. It's a hot bite. There we go, another one on there. Get this rod back in there. We're gonna get a production line happening here. That's beautiful, another squid. Check out him. We'll keep an eye on that one because it's not in the rod, hole. We'll end up, rod holder. It'll end up getting pulled into the water. All right, in you come, dude. And as you can see, you don't actually need a net. You just pull them put your hand underneath them, scoop them up. We're gonna bag out pretty quickly here. That's awesome. Man, we have hit the patch of squid. And how can I get that around there without getting sprayed in the face? Come on, buddy. Oh, he's got me. <gasps> Get off! That's an aggressive one. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right. Whew. All right, well that was a hot little pocket of squid and check this out. When the Spencer Golf turns it on, it really turns it on. Beautiful eating calamari. They're going to be so, so tasty. And I've been cod fishing for the past month, flat out. And you know what's really nice? Is to actually come and just whack a few fish. Get it out of my system. I can go back casting cod lures again, but it's so nice just to belt. Belt some fish one after the other. And that is just super cool. I'm really, really stoked with that little patch of squid. That was awesome. All right, I'm gonna keep an eye on that rod. 
in a dispatch of these and I'll catch a couple more. All right, they're all in the esky. If you want to find out how to dispatch the squid, just check out episode two, casting um, jigs for Tassie squid, and I explain how to dispatch your squid there. What I'm going to do now, because we had that big patch of squid, it'd be silly not to re-fish through it, so I'm just going to pull these jigs in, zip back up, and we'll re-drift that again. So in South Australia, you've got a bag limit of 15 squid of any size. Um, I think my plan is, I'm going to catch 10, 10 would be really nice and then I can put some in the freezer, keep them for when we head over to do the whiting and um, then I've got some to eat. I'm really, really looking forward to eating some squid again, they are so tasty. See, I told you I was going to make a mess, and that's, that's a good mess, I'd say. Now, there's one thing about a good squid session, is that you can never lie at the boat ramp. Well, I can't anyway, because I always get ink and everything everywhere. Normally, I'd come out and be targeting that three to four metres of water. But my wife suggested that I go for slightly deeper, five to six metres of water, and that's where I've been finding all my squid. So there you go. Oh, here he comes. There he is. Ah, oh, yeah, got him. Nice. And that's number 10. Dude. Okay, just, just by the end, the end of his tentacle. And he is just primed, ready to squirt me in the face. And like I said, that's number 10. Really, really, really happy. That was a really fun session. Now I can go in, I'm gonna clean some up, have them for dinner tonight. And I'm gonna put the rest in the freezer for bait and we can keep heading on down the coast. That was awesome fun. All right, we got all our squid here. So like I said before, I'm gonna keep some for bait, which are gonna be the smaller ones, and then all the bigger ones I'm gonna clean. So I'll run you through how I like to clean them. Um, I've done it a few different ways over the years, and I'm sure there's a heap of different ways you can do it, um, but this is just how I like to do it. So firstly, remove the head. So I just pinch behind the eyes to pull the head off. Now I'm gonna keep that, because that is prime whiting bait. So that can go back in the tub. Now the next step that I do is uh, simply you've got, you need to remove the wings. So underneath each wing is a bit of a ridge. And if you can find that ridge, if I can find that ridge, doesn't want to do it on this one. There it is there. So I've got that ridge. So if you can get your thumb underneath there and just slide it either way and that'll remove the wing. And by doing that, it actually lifts the outer skin off, which you want to get rid of. So we'll do that at the same time. Let's pull that wing off. I don't actually keep the wings. Some people like the wings. I don't really like the wings, so they can, birds can have them. And I just need to get rid of the extra bit of skin here. So just pull that off. It's good doing it by the water. It's so much easier than doing it when you get home. So just pulling that outer skin off all the way to the front. Like that. So the next step that I like to do, which is what I've found makes it a lot easier, is to simply uh, slice the um, tube in half and that'll expose all the insides. I always used to turn them inside out that that can be really painful at times and 
it takes a lot more time so just by slicing down the side of the tube like this it exposes all the stuff on the inside which you can pull out now each squid's got a feather which is this little bit of cartilage in the back there so once again you want to get your thumbs underneath that to pull that cartilage out so and pull it there so that's the feather the feathers hard you want to get rid of those get rid of that pull out the rest of the insides the birds can have that as well get rid of a bit of this stuff and that's pretty much it so it's so much quicker than trying to turn them inside out once I've done that I can give them a bit of a wash and then you're left with the squid tube so what I like to do to cook them is I get rid of the the head and the tail and then I simply cut it into strips which then can be crumbed and shallow fried and it's just so tasty it's awesome so what I'm gonna do I'll clean all the big ones and then uh, I can go and have a beer and chill out